What is a normal dose for prednisone? Do you have any idea? Today, as your prednisone pharmacist, I'm going to talk to you about that. People often wonder, what's a normal dose? And one of the prednisone warriors specifically asked, what is a normal dose for people on rheumatoid arth- with rheumatoid arthritis? And do people often get stuck going down? We'll be covering that today because I've promised to answer the questions that you give me. So this is going out to you, Melissa. All right, so first of all, prednisone. It comes in milligrams. Now, if this was measured in milligrams, it would be like 5,000 milligrams, right? It's huge, it's humongous. Prednisone is teeny little tiny tablets and they're measured in milligrams. The range is anywhere from one milligram to the biggest size it comes in is 30 milligrams. So it's gonna have to be a multiple of that. It's gonna have to be either 30 times two or one times two kind of a thing because that's all it comes in is one, two and a half, five, ten, twenty, and thirty milligrams. Once you know what the possibilities are, now let's talk about what is a low dose and what is a high dose. So your body normally makes two and a half milligrams or so, somewhere between the equivalent of what prednisone is two and a half to five milligrams. That's the what your adrenal glands and your hypothalamus secrete the cortisol, your stress hormone, in they call it a physiologic dose. So that's what um, your body normally has. So anything over two and a half to five milligrams is more than your body normally gives out. So that means it's helping you in some way. It's either lowering your immune system so that you can chill out on some autoimmune reaction, or it is giving you pain relief as an anti-inflammatory, or many other things. So anything below seven and a half milligrams is considered to be a low dose. Anything between seven and a half and 15 milligrams, that's a medium dose. Anything between 15 milligrams and um, about 40 milligrams, really, that is a high dose. And then anything above 40 milligrams is very high. So to put that in perspective, often people start at a very high dose and drop down. They might start at 60 milligrams and then drop off pretty quickly from there, or they might start out even higher. For example, people who are having a flare of multiple sclerosis, like maybe they're losing vision in one eye or something terrible like that, they might go as high as 200 milligrams all at once and for a whole week. That's incredibly high. I thought for sure I had one of the highest doses I'd ever heard of. When I had um, my big flare of ITP, first they started me on one milligram per kilogram. So that means for a person my size, who's 60 kilograms, they gave me 60 milligrams of prednisone. And that seemed pretty high until they gave me an alternative. And it was prednisone's cousin, dexamethasone. And they gave me 10 of the highest strength tablets to, to take all at once for four days in a row. So that meant the equivalent of 150 milligrams of prednisone. Holy cow, that's high. So typically you don't really hear much above 60 milligrams. It's pretty, there must be something really severe going on. Like me, I was nearly bleeding to death. Other people might be losing their vision or their kidneys or something really, really bad would would be justification for going above 60 milligrams. But otherwise, it's really pretty rare to go above 60 milligrams. 40 milligrams is often a starting dose for like a taper. So you'll often see like 40 milligrams today, 30 milligrams tomorrow, 20 milligrams the next day, 10, 5, and off. That's a 
frequent taper that people will get in the emergency room for random things that maybe the doctor doesn't even know what the problem is. And then um, other times people are stuck on a high dose for a long time. So people who have really bad breathing problems or kidney problems, they might be stuck on 40 milligrams like their whole life for the rest of their life. That's a possibility. Then the person who asked, Melissa, she asked about rheumatoid arthritis. So people who have rheumatoid disease, they are typically on a dose somewhere between 5 and 10 milligrams, somewhere in that lowish sort of dose, just right above the physiologic dose. That's a typical dose for people. And people can be stuck on prednisone for a very long time because right as they start dropping below that five milligrams, often their their joints start flaring and they start having lots of pain and having a hard time getting out of bed and having gelling of their joints in the morning. So they often get stuck somewhere between that you're getting pain relief. That means that the benefit of being able to use your hands, of being able to walk, of whatever issue you're facing with your disease, having that benefit is greater than the side effects. So that begs the question, at what dose do side effects start? So most side effects of prednisone are less at lower doses and worse at higher doses. For example, psychological side effects are very common above at 60 milligrams and above. Like three out of five people will have anxiety or jittery feelings or depression at really high doses. Whereas it's much less common to have um, the anxiety and things down at the five to 10 milligrams. What about weight gain and moon face? Well, moon face gets bigger and worse the higher the dose you go. So often as you get down in doses, your moon face will shrink. And it's usually not very visible between the 5 and 10 milligrams. For some people it is, but once you get down that low, it usually starts going away. What about insomnia? Insomnia is usually worse at the higher doses as well. So I've got movies about all of these things about how to how to um, fight back against the insomnia, how to fight back against the weight gain. Check them out in the playlists on my page, The Prednisone Warriors with Dr. Megan Page. Um, let's see. And then the final thing I wanted to say is that according to the um, rheumatologist guidelines, so they're the number one prescribers of prednisone, they say that Anybody who takes prednisone should do it for the shortest duration and the lowest dose possible to get the greatest benefit to risk ratio. And it's okay if you're on it long term, but if you are on it long term, you need to be taking calcium and vitamin D. That's what the rheumatologists say. And um, if you would like a special form of calcium and vitamin D with all the other eight nutrients that you need, check out Nutrinize Zone. It is formulated especially for people on prednisone. You can get it at Nutrinize.com. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.